Hi, this is Javier Chavez from Katif Technologies here. And in this session, Content Center Part 1, I'm going to show you how to copy and customize existing content in the Inventor Content Center. Before we get started, let's take a second to find out what the Content Center is exactly. It's actually a database that doesn't necessarily contain parts, but instead contains the instructions to create the parts. And within the database, there's approximately three quarters of a million standard off-the-shelf parts. Our customers often find it necessary to customize the existing content to reflect their part numbers, materials, and file naming convention. In some cases, the parts you're looking for don't even exist in the content center. For example, ball valve. Cases like these will be covered in part two of this series. Now that we've gone over some of the reasons for customizing your content center, let's examine the workflow. I've broken it down into four basic steps. Create a custom library, copy an existing family, editing the family table, and placing and testing your parts. Let's begin with the first step. Before we can create a custom library, we need to find out what type of library we're using. One way to check is to launch Inventor and go to the Tools tab and click on Application Options under the Options panel. You can then go to the Content Center tab and see if you're set to access the Content Center through desktop content or through a Vault server. Users typically use desktop content when they're in a single user environment or in a very small work group of three or less users. This method by default installs the database on the user's station. However, you can change the path in this dialog box and move the libraries to a common location for all users. The disadvantage to this is that anyone can edit these custom libraries. If you're already using Vault or simply have a large work group, then you can install Vault on a server in your network and have all the users access the content center from there. In this environment, you can assign permission to control who can make changes to the custom libraries. Another way to find this out is to find someone in your organization who's taken on the role of CAD manager, and you can simply ask them if you're accessing the content center through desktop content or through a vault server. The process of creating a custom library differs between the two options, so we'll take a look at both, starting with creating your own custom library on a vault server. You'll first need to physically log on to the server and launch the Autodesk Data Management Server Console or ADMS. You will then log into the console with either administrator or content center administrator roles. Once you're logged on, you can simply right click on the libraries folder and choose create a library. Enter a name for your library and click OK. Your library will now be created. If you expand the library folder, you'll most likely see the existing libraries that are included. However, you'll note that they're read only and you cannot change them. However, if you take a look at your custom library, although it's empty, it is read, write, and ready to populate with some information. We'll now close ADMS console and launch Inventor on a workstation and go to the Get Started tab and click the Projects button under the Launch panel. In the Project Editor that appears, we can click on the Configure Content Center Libraries button. If you checked your settings previously and you're set up correctly, you'll be asked to log into Vault. You will not need any special permissions for this step, However, if you're using a project file that is in the vault, you will need to check it out of the vault prior to this. Once you're logged in, you will place a check next to your custom content center library. This would also be a good time to uncheck any libraries that you don't need or don't want other users to access. You can now click OK, save your project, and if your project was checked out of the vault, you can now check it back in. To create a custom library when accessing through the desktop option, you can simply launch Inventor on your workstation and go to the Get Started tab and click the Projects button under the Launch panel. In the Project Editor that appears, we can click on the Configure Content Center Libraries button. If you checked your settings previously and you're set up correctly, you will not be asked to log into Vault. Instead, the Configure Libraries dialog will simply appear. In the dialog, you can click on the Create Library button, name your library, and then click OK. Your custom library will appear with a check already next to it. Again, this would also be a good time to uncheck any libraries that you don't need or want other users to access. You'll also note that the dialog box includes a hyperlink to where these libraries exist. They exist as IDCL files, just in case you need to move them or have to back them up. We can now click OK and save our project file. Keep in mind that these settings can change from project file to project file, and you may have to add this library to other project files. In the next steps, the processes will be virtually the same, regardless of how you access the Content Center. However, we'll demonstrate this in a Vault environment. Let's now copy a family so that we have something to customize. In Inventor, we'll go to the Tools tab and click on the Editor button 
under the Content Center panel. If you're using Vault, you'll need to log in with either Administrator or Content Center Editor roles. If you're using Desktop Content, the Content Center Editor will simply appear. Once you're in the editor, you'll be able to navigate through the library as you normally would. However, you'll notice that all the icons are grayed out, indicating that all these families you're looking at are from read-only libraries. At the top, we have a filter, and if we click on the pull-down, we can see different libraries available, including your own custom library. And when we filter out to our own custom library, you'll notice that the library is empty. Nothing shows up. So let's reset the filter back to the ANSI library so that we're only looking at ANSI library parts. And let's browse to the socket head cap screws. When we right click on the brooch socket head cap screws, we can choose to edit the family table to display the table that includes every instance of this component. You'll notice that when we right click on rows in the table, many of the options are grayed out. So for right now, we'll exit out of the family table and instead right click on the family. This is where we'll find our copy options. We'll utilize these so that we can copy our own families and customize them. You'll notice that we have two copy options, copy to, and save copy as. Let's take a look at what the differences are. The copy to option will always show the same family name regardless. So even if we make a copy of the brooch socket head cap screw metric, that name will always stay the same. It will also receive updates when you migrate to a newer release of Inventor and stays connected to the original library. So that original library always has to be present. The save copy as option allows you to name the family and show it separately. So our broached head socket cap screw might show up as Kativ socket head cap screw. We can rename it to whatever we want. Within the save as copy option, you have some choices to make. You can either maintain a link to the original library, which will receive updates when you migrate to new releases of Inventor, or you can make it completely independent. Keep in mind, anytime you have a link to the standard libraries, you will always have to keep and maintain the standard libraries. Whereas with the independent option, you can simply have your independent library and eventually remove the standard libraries. Let's try each of these options, starting out with the copy to option. When we right click on the family, we can choose copy to and then choose the name of our custom library. Once the family is created, let's right click on the same family again and choose the save copy as option. In the next dialog box, you'll see the option to choose independent or link to family. Let's go ahead and try the link option. We can now name the family and update the description. You'll notice when we're done creating the family, none of these families actually show up. However, if we filter our custom library at the top, you'll then see these custom families. If we go back to the merge view, which shows all libraries, you will now notice that our brooch socket head cap screw with the same name shows up opaque and our Kativ family also shows up opaque, signifying that these families are now in a read-write library. Let's go ahead and try the last save copy as option. This time, we'll choose the independent option. We'll go ahead and name our library accordingly. In this case, we're going to make it a titanium version of this family, and so we'll go ahead and do that and click OK. In the editor, you'll now see all three families, and then if you filter to our view showing only your custom family, it should make this a lot easier to look at. If we change our view to show thumbnails, you'll notice that the icons look different depending on what copy options we chose. The first one shows a copy to, the second one shows the save copy as with a link, and the third one shows up as an independent family with no icon. Now that we've created new families, it's time to actually change these families to make them unique by editing the family table that controls them. This process is the same regardless of how you copy the families. So in this example, we'll only edit one. In the family table editor, we're going to right click on the titanium family that we created. Every row here represents an instance of this cap screw. Some of the values here represent modeling parameters that control the size of the part, while others represent metadata such as part numbers and descriptions or, or maybe the file naming convention. In this case, we want to limit users of this family to use only screws between 6 and 16 millimeters nominal diameter. So we'll select all the rows corresponding to anything above 16 millimeters, right click and choose to suppress them. Now we have the option to delete them permanently. However, instead we'll suppress them just in case you want to bring them back later. And we'll repeat the process in the parts that are below six millimeters. If we take a look at the table, 
and find the material column, you'll notice that the material is labeled as steel. We'll now update that column to reflect titanium and match our family table name. In some cases, you might find it easier to go to the top left and choose the Open in Excel button. The table opens up in Excel, and you can now edit the values here. Once you're done making changes in Excel, you'll want to close and save the spreadsheet. There are several other fields that you may want to change, such as part numbers or file names, and in this case, you'll notice that some of these fields are blue. Now you can change that field and type in whatever you'd like, but you'll want to be aware that the blue fields represent fields that have an expression tied to them. These expressions are basically formulas that concatenate other values or strings of text to create values for those fields for you. In this case, we're going to put the word titanium in the front of the file name to customize a file name. Notice all the file names have changed. You can also right click and add rows and create a completely new instance of the size of the screw. If you click OK, you'll finish customizing the table. Again, the process of editing the table is the same regardless of how they were copied. If all you want to do is create a new family of parts with a different material, you might also choose to right click on a family and choose a material guide. This is a quick, easy way to do this with all the copying options you saw earlier. The last step in this process is to place and test these parts into an assembly. In Inventor, we'll open up an empty assembly and place one of our custom family parts from the content center. To make this easier to look at, we'll go to the filter and filter to the ANSI standard, which is a standard that we copied earlier. You'll notice that the family that we used the copy to option on blends in with the list of cap screws. It maintained the same name. However, the save copy as families show up under their own names, making them easier to distinguish as custom parts. Let's go ahead and double click on our titanium library and test it out. When we do, you'll notice that the sizes are limited to the sizes that we specified in the family table. You can also look at the table view and verify some of the other customizations that we've made. If we select one instance and place it in the assembly, the build materials and I properties should reflect our customizations. If they don't, you simply repeat the process of editing the table as before and make sure that the values are correct. So you have now gone through the process of copying and customizing content in the Inventor Content Center. Don't forget to look for more recorded AVA sessions like this from Kativ Technologies. Thank you.